This video is to show you how to perform the chelating titration experiment E1. You are monitoring this reaction using a pH meter. So it's not quite like the standard indicator titration that you're used to. You will be making up solutions of methylamino diacetic acid or MEDA. You'll make up a, about a liter of this. Here's one that's been made up and used. And you'll also be making up solutions of two different metals of a similar concentration, um, barium chloride and copper sulfate. You can tell this one is copper because it's blue. These two materials will form complexes with MEDA, and you will be investigating how this happens at what pH levels with meter in the course of the pH titration and this experiment. The solutions for this particular experiment are not made up in water, but rather in potassium nitrate solution. Uh, this is so that you swamp the ionic concentration of the solutions, and small variations caused by change in pH will not actually change the activity. The potassium nitrate is found here in Wahlberg 202 in these cubes. Make sure that you've got the right concentration and then open the tap, collect an appropriate amount. Please make sure the tap is off all the way over to the right, otherwise we'll get dribbles. These cubes are where you will find all sorts of solutions. Bases and neutral solutions are here in Wahlberg 202 Next door, you'll find different concentrations of acids in Wahlberg 203. Once you have made up the solutions, you will be dispensing appropriate amounts of the liquids into not an Erlenmeyer flask, but a beaker. And so there's a reasonable amount of meter in there, and sometimes no other added metal. For the later two titrations, you'll add an amount of either copper or barium. Then, let's just put some liquid in here so it feels right. You'll have a stir bar and it sits on top of a stirrer so that the reaction is ready to go. You won't be swirling this one and unlike other titrations, you will not, repeat, not be adding any water because that will change the pH slightly and that will change where you perceive things happening. When you're ready to go, turn the stirrer on and you'll be titrating with sodium hydroxide in this, which is not looking very familiar. It's a small 10 mil burette. You will be adding small amounts from the 10 mil burette into the titration vessel. The protocol tells you how to how much to add at various times. And instead of a one or two color indicator, you're going to be using a pH meter. That's what I've got here. And you'll position this so that the head, the pH probe is actually in the beaker and the titration, the tip of the burette is also inside the beaker and you're not gonna lose anything. Turn on the pH meter. I'm gonna show you how to calibrate that in a minute. Turn on the stirrer, add various amounts. After you have added the first amount, let it sit for 15, 30 seconds, read the pH. Add some more, keep stirring, read the pH. And that's how you go through a pH monitored titration. You won't see any color changes. You will see numerical changes on the display of the pH meter. When you finish the first one, you discard the material, you add more meter, you will add some metal solution, read the pH before you add any sodium hydroxide. You actually need that number, so make sure that you read it before you add any sodium hydroxide, and then add the sodium hydroxide in progression, and again, monitor the pH. This is a pH meter, and this is how you use it. At the moment, it's set on standby, which means it's shorted out, and the electrode has been sitting in distilled water um, overnight or since the last time it was used. 
Now, the trick is don't lift the electrode out of a liquid unless it's on standby. That's, you can polarize the electrode and it will give you very peculiar results if you do that. We are going to calibrate the machine using buffer solutions which are available in these vials. They live next to a pH meter. They're labeled and they're also color coded. So we'll lift this up and using a chem wipe, blot it dry. And when I say blot, that's what I mean. Don't rub it dry. Again, you'll develop a static electric charge and that's a fabulous way to get lousy results. So we then lower the electrode into this one, which is the pH four buffer, it's pink. And we turn this to pH over this way and then use the standardized knob to make sure that the machine reads 4.01. There we are, that's now set at 4.01. And the second thing I do, whoops, get back up there. Thank you. Is put that on standby and we do the second portion of the calibration. It's on standby, lift it up out of the buffer solution, put the cap back on, and rinse the electrode, blot it again, and we're now going to put it into pH 10. Now at this point, we put it onto pH, and instead of using standardized, we're going to use the slope to adjust this until it gets to 10.01. And so we adjust this until we're getting to 10.01. There we go. Put it on standby and again lift up, wash the electrodes off, and we're now ready to take pH measurements using this machine. If you forget, there is the instruction of how to standardize a pH meter is always going to be nearby to the pH meter, so you won't tra travel very far. When you want to read, just put your solution under the electrode, turn it onto pH, and it'll tell you what the pH is. When you are ready to do cleanup, all of these solutions can go down the sink with lots of running water. When you are finished with the pH probe, please put it back into the beaker where you found it, which is going to be containing distilled water, and make sure that the pH probe, the pH meter is set on standby. That is how you perform experiment E1, which is chelating titrations of methylaminodiacetic acid.